So we had Mobile World Congress here at the Mobile High Definition Link. This is a new consortium. That's correct. It's a consortium that was founded last year. Sony, Toshiba, Samsung. Yeah. Um, Sony, Toshiba, Samsung, Silicon Image, and Toshiba yeah. uh, all basically got together and said we need to have a new mobile, uh, a new link, video link for mobile devices. Uh, HDMI works great for set-top boxes and PS3s and things like that, but um, it's not really optimized for a mobile device. And so what, when we say optimize, we've, uh, the demo we have here is we modified a media player. You'll see it has micro USB out. So is it hot, hot, hot yeah, 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 yeah. Is it okay it's to take it off like that and just to show and yeah. put it back in? It's going to be easy yeah. to reconnect? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a normal micro USB. Yeah. But behind, sized a connector, right? Correct. And behind the micro USB connector inside the device is a yeah. USB switch so that it knows when it sees USB's impedance, it'll be USB power or USB data. If it sees MHL's impedance, it'll switch to MHL and do audio and video and charging. So uh, is this cable special? This cable? So this is, this is the actual cable we're using. So you can actually see it. Um, it's special in the sense that it has a um, standard micro USB connector on one side. Yeah. And then it actually has a standard HDMI uh, connector on the other side, but we're only using the connectors. The cable is just five wires, and it has MHL signaling over that cable. Um, so that way, when I plug this cable into the TV, it will auto-recognize this as an MHL connection and basically provide power and then audio-video. Uh, power as well? Power. The TV will charge the device really? while you're using it. Well, every TV does that? So the TVs that will have uh, MHL in them will. So, uh, no, but no TV has that yet. No TV has that yet, but I expect the first TVs as well as the first phones and tablets to be announced in the second quarter of this year. So, uh, for example, the Galaxy S2 ha has this. Has uh, MHL inside. And so. you can buy this cable, you can connect to any HD TV, right? But it will not charge for now. Correct. So, it actually, you have to use, if you want to connect to a current TV today, yeah. you use one of these adapters. And this is essentially an MHL to HDMI adapter. And so what and you do, charge. what you do is, because the experience when you use MHL is you want to be charging your phone while you yeah. use it, you plug this into the phone, yeah. you plug your phone adapter, phone charger into the, yeah. the dongle, and then this is standard HDMI out. Nice. And this, this allows you, you to use it with any legacy TV today. You have no worry about playing HD movies and not that's using right. all the battery, and that's you can right. just pick it up and continue. Yeah, and, and that's why, you know, keeping the device ready to use at all times, you know, I... This applies not just to mobile devices, but think of camcorder. I have three little kids, actually right there, and when I, we shoot them uh, for a musical production, and then they want to watch it, so then we play back the camcorder and watch it, and then they want to do something else. Well, the camcorder's dead at that point, because you, you've shot and then you've played back. And if I had MHL, then I would be ready to go again as soon as we're done playing back, you know, and shoot more footage. The other thing that's very convenient is that the remote control for the TV will actually control the connected device. So I know, again, my camcorder story, you can see that I'm actually changing things. You know, the, I've gotten a camcorder remote control, the little camcorder remote controls with every camcorder I've owned. I have lost every camcorder remote control I've ever had. You know, I don't need another remote control. So having whatever is connected to it, use the remote control, the primary remote control, which is one for your TV, is great. And so it makes for a good user experience. So there's data coming back from the HDMI to yep. the device. That's right. How much data can come back? So um, I don't think we've measured it, but uh, it, it's in the megabit range. It's not like an Ethernet connector. No, it's not like an Ethernet connector. It's not a gigabit it's, LAN. It is for uh, control of the device. So, All right. It could so it's be. Not networking. It will never be the, like an Ethernet. So I won't. Never is not necessarily a good word. This yes. is MHL 1.0. For 2.0, we have a couple of things we're thinking about. Uh, just like HDMI in a future revision, yeah. they're talking about doing networking. Um, that might happen for MHL too, but right now, you know, we what haven't decided yet. What other couple of things are you thinking about? Um, so, other things that I'm thinking about are, are obvious 3D. 3D? Um, you know, as well as uh, possibly doing maybe some of the more audio modes like uh, DTS and Dolby Digital and you know, things like that. So Does, It doesn't support. Uh, Surround right now? It does. It'll do uncompressed 7.1 surround, so eight channel uh, under 1.0. Under 1.0. So, what do you need to do 3D? Uh, More bandwidth? 
No, the, there's a different, lot of different schemes on how you do 3D, yeah. so it's more of an implementation uh, thing. Okay. So, um, Silicon Image, who is one of the chip makers for MHL, yeah. uh, needs to figure out how they want to do the hardware to support it and, and the firmware, and then MHL you know, can, can support 3D. If you get a TV with MHL 1.0, do you need to buy a new TV for 2.0, or can it be software updated? And I think it's too early to decide that. that yeah. The hope always is that you can have 2.0 features with just yeah. a firmware upgrade. Uh, but again, you know, since we're right now uh, just studying what we want to do yeah. for 2.0, um, I can't commit to a firmware upgrade or no firmware upgrade. All right, so okay. here it says uh, December 21, 2010, and the certification was released uh, June 30, so it's kind so of a new thing. It's a new thing, and that's why you see the Samsung Galaxy S2 is the first phone yeah. that uh, has um, MHL in it. You'll right. see, you know, before the summer, many more phones. Uh, we actually have, I believe, six to seven phones in testing right now. Uh, I can't share with you uh, who they are because we're under NDA. Okay. But there's a tablet uh, in testing, and there's also uh, some TVs in testing. So you'll see, you'll start to see the ecosystem of MHL products by the summer. All right. Uh, so a normal HDMI connector on a TV does never charge and does never send data back. Correct. So that's uh, no, no. So I'm going to correct you on that. There is something called CEC. So yeah. CEC allows the remote control of the TV to control like a Sony camcorder. Sony TV yeah. will control a Sony camcorder if it's connected over HDMI. Um, but it's yeah. like like. So Samsung works with Samsung. Sony works with Sony. Toshiba works with Toshiba. Okay. It's not uh, interoperable. Uh, uh, this this thing cannot uh, like uh, use that feature of an existing TV to uh, make it compatible. It could. You could actually make uh, vendor specific uh, adapters. Okay. But where the beauty of MHL is is that the RCP protocol that we use for this uh, controlling the remote control is mandatory and uh, must be implemented by everyone who implements either a device or the TV. So that means that fast forward to the future. A Sony TV will talk correctly to a Samsung phone. Uh, you know, an HTC phone will talk correctly to a Toshiba TV. It will all interwork, which uh, you don't have today. So, can you use MHL for USB host? Um, no, because uh, MHL is actually not USB. We're using the USB connector, and we have a USB switch behind it, so it'll know whether it's USB or MHL. But you, you use one or the other right now. But uh, the, the MHL is only about HDMI. The MHL is only about uploading essentially video and audio uncompressed to the TV. All right. So, so do you know the Motorola Atrix? Yes. Yeah. They have all these cool features, and uh, the idea was could potentially the Galaxy S2 if they decide they want to do accessories for like. Uh, well, well, let's, all these kinds let's of talk about the Motorola Atrix. So, yeah. the interesting thing about the Atrix is they have an HD dock, and so I basically put the phone in HD dock and I connect it to my TV. And so here's the problem. I, for an Atrix dock, I've got the dock. I yeah. then have to connect it via an HDMI cable like this yeah. to my TV. And I also have to plug it into the power. Dock needs power, so i got to plug the uh, dock into the wall. Yes. And then I finally dock my phone. Yeah. Or you can do the same thing with this. Just one cable. Or just one cable to the phone. It's so, very cool. So, so which would you rather, you know, if I'm traveling and I want to do an HD dock, I gotta carry the dock, the cable, the power adapter, or I could just carry this. But it'd be nice if uh, if there was some extra USB on this cable somehow. Oh, and to you make could it connect universal. the keyboard and the mouse. Um, so uh, yes, it would be. But what I've actually played with is um, I'm starting to see phones that have the USB, uh, the Bluetooth keyboard and mouse profile. Yeah. So um, I actually one of my demos I'm working on is I connect the phone to my TV and then I sit back on my couch and I use my Bluetooth keyboard and mouse and use it like a living room PC. It is 100% as fast as a USB keyboard. Yeah, because it's bl the Bluetooth. It's wireless keyboard, and wireless mouse. But I've seen some uh, Bluetooth that disconnect, reconnect, have problems and all that. Uh, I think these are the more mature products. Uh, okay. They're, they're very stable. So basically the connect. The system would be use Bluetooth and MHL for the HD output. Yeah. If uh, you would want to dock something like this into a laptop kind of thing, yeah. then that is only the HDMI that's been used and the keyboard would be Bluetooth kind of thing. Yes. Or the device would need to have another USB host. And even for laptops, it's interesting. We've talked to a laptop, two laptop makers who are talking about having another power button for just the monitor because they want to be able to have MHL in. So I basically connect my phone. 
to the laptop, turn only the screen on and use the bigger screen of the laptop. Um, so, you know, it, it, there's a lot of uses for MHL coming out. It's pretty interesting. This is the secret phone? No, this is a Galaxy One. Ah, okay, it's not the... So, so no MHL in this phone. But you've so, been testing it for a few months. Yeah. So as soon as, as soon as Galaxy 2 comes out, I'm switching. The Galaxy S2 is the most awesome phone ever. Yeah, it's a very beautiful phone. It's a new ARM Cortex A9. Yeah. Uh, it does support... beautiful It too. does 3D at uh, 720p. Will that work with the MHL One? So, uh, MHL One does not support 3D uh, okay. right now. But 1080p, you know, everything but there. But 1080p, no problem. Okay. Uh, 1080p, 60, no problem. And then uh, 7.1 surround. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks.